oh, I'm choking up a little bit because um, I didn't expect at all to turn out the way that it did. I, I, at the beginning, it was a, it was a bread and butter thing. I could see the mission tour was going south, and I'm a jobbing musician. I need to work, and I expected maybe Stephen and I would be doing maybe you know a whole for ten shows. It turned into 39 altogether by the time the tour was over. Um, it's Stephen's first experience in America, and I'm really happy that it's such a positive one in every way, in every level. Um, this is the most enjoyable tour I've ever done, and I've been touring since I was 21. And this is by far the most, the most rewarding tour um, on so many different levels, and being just great fun to being something quite prof profound and moving. Uh, the, the love, the generosity, the warmth. Um, the friendships I'm making along the way are just tremendous. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to thank all of you for supporting this um, and thank Tim and Angela for the, for the invitation. Um, we have um, um, Terry down here who hosted Atlanta, which was uh, a tremendous. And we also went above and beyond. We were staying with you for three or four days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, I'll just, we'll, just, we'll get on with it now. Um, I did tend to talk a lot, so if, if, uh, just shut me up if, I, if I'm going on too much. Um, I'm going to start, actually, this is a bit of a journey, but I'm going to start with the last thing, well, the second book last thing that I wrote with Chameleons um, in 1987 before we disbanded. And um, it was inspired by Kate Bush, actually, um, who I was obsessed with. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit. <laughs> I'm years of like 16. And um, I thought, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it into, I'm going to try and put it into a song, my feelings into a song, because um, if I stalk her, I'll probably get in trouble. And, um, which is why I never were able to give her a copy, because I could never find out where she lived, and that's probably just as well to quite Because <laughs> I've been outside, camping outside his girlfriend. Um, it's called The Healer. <clears throat>
Jackson and she just wouldn't want to know me at all. <laughs> Too weird. And um, I was reading Anthony and Cleopatra for the English Lit and it said in the first act and opening speech it says, and he has become the bellows and the fan to call the gypsies lost. And I thought, that's me, that's me, that's what it's done to me. So I'm going to steal it because he's been dead 600 years, what's he going to do? <laughs> I'm going to take that and I'll play it and she'll be sorry that she, she wasn't sorry at all. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it does have the word masturbate, so I do apologise. Um, um, no, that's in there. So, yes, so it's so in well, I'll tell you, what it means, it, it's, when you're a seven, when you're a 17 year old boy in England, it's your main occupation in life. It's your main hobby. Um, yeah, uh, CBS were very unhappy about it. Oh, you want to play it on the radio if you put that in it? I'm so in the dictionary and everything. What? Uh, they were right though, and nobody played it. So, uh, yeah, it's called The Fan and the Bella.
remember back I think perhaps it must be shooting the season She teaches me to sing the records, and that's my first step to language. After that, I began you know, putting it all together. And um, music's been central to my life ever since that, that ever since, literally ever since. Um, it's got me through some of the darkest times in my life. It's helped me celebrate some of the greatest moments in my life. It's just been there for me. And uh, I wanted to try to uh, articulate that a little bit. Um, with something uh, that we were, I was doing with the guys. Again, this is very early. You can tell it's got the same cards as the last song, because I didn't really, really know that many at the time. And, um, so yeah, it, uh, this is uh, it's called Pleasure and Pain.
Um, we, we did, we did um, break up in 1987, but we got back together briefly in uh, the year 2000, and um, one thing led to another, and we found ourselves making another record, uh, which is nice. And uh, I brought this, actually, I brought this to, to Reg first, and then Dave came in on it. Um, and George W. Bush had just been elected to the White House, and uh, I, remember, I remember saying to myself, because I'm a glass half full kind of guy, I, I remember saying to myself, well, look on the bright side, Mark, things can't get any worse than this. And, which is something that you should never say, isn't it, really? Um, so, I've, tw I've, t I've tweaked the words a little bit. Uh, again, you know, please forgive my language of the rainy miners in the room, cover their ears the first couple of uh, uh, lines. Um, you know, I hope you're not offended. It, 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 if you are, I'm afraid it's so shit because I'm not playing anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's called Anyone Alive.
Uh, this is a. Uh, this goes out to everybody, anybody. If there's anybody here that's been to the Highlands of Scotland and seen how beautiful that is, uh, this is for you. Um, we used to go to this place called Loch Ness, right? And um, which I'm sure you've heard of, right? Because there's what's well, been monsters, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, so like, we, did, we, we went out in the boat and we scattered roaches and potato chips on the surface, <laughs> trying to cops it. Nothing worked, and it was sensibility. Hurt. No, it wasn't rubbish. No way. So I don't know about that, but um, it's a beautiful place. It became a spiritual place, and something we did see something very wonderful. There. It wasn't a monster. Uh, what it was, I, I couldn't really tell you because I was 22 when I saw it, I'm 62 now, and I'm still trying to figure it out. I still don't know what it was. Um, all I can say it was an absolutely wonderful thing, and um, I gave a vital appendage to see it again. Um, I, let me, if you do go there, let me tell you where it is. It's it's halfway, about halfway, or a third of the way down the lock. The lock is very narrow, it's a fault line filled with water. And, it's very narrow, about a mile wide, and then it widens out into a bay of about one and a half miles, and that's the deepest part, that's like a thousand feet, and it's sheer, and it goes like this. You know. Surface is like black mirror, because it, there's so much peat in the water from the inside, so it doesn't reflect much light, so it's at night time, it looks like a black mirror, it gets very still. And there's a castle there, and a ruined castle, in fact, if, if you, you see scripts of the bridge, Red Stuart on the front of the background, it's that castle. And uh, there's a tower there, and if you go you go in, uh, there's a visitor center around it now. They, they, they charge you like 50 bucks just to take a, a picture of it, especially if you've got an American accent, right? <laughs> but, um, yeah, so uh, that's there now, so I don't know what's going on with that. But back then, there was one old guy smoking a woodbine, uh, charged you a pound on the way in, and at six o'clock he went home for his tea, and that was it. And he just climbed over the gate and went in, it was great. And right to the right of the castle, I told you where to go, right to the right of the castle is a piece of chain, you'll see a piece of chain like this, and it's got a sign on it, right? and it says, Danger, absolutely no admittance beyond this point. Right. Ignore that, right? Just walk past that, you'll be fine, don't wear, if you're not wearing sandals, you'll be fine. Just go down and there's a rocky beach there, and that's the deepest part, you're right on the water. The towers above you, there. there's the water there, take some whiskey, I would. Put some talisker or something like that, and get fit it, and light a little fire. You'll have the time of your lives, and you might see something wonderful. We we did see something wonderful. We wrote a song about it. Um, every line is true. There's no artistic license. There's no exaggeration. This is what we saw, and um, it's called on the beach.
telling you I saw her. Figure in the sky.
Another question, first time round, anyway, first time round for the Camillas, another question I used to get um, in the wake of um, the band ending was, um, that, why did you split up, man? You're right on the verge, you're right on the verge, mate. Why did you split up? And uh, that's a very difficult question to answer. It's a very complex question of why does anything uh, like that happen, why the marriages end, right? Why the relationship group, it's very complex. And um, so I dodge it, I dodge the question, but then, I thought, no, I'm going to admit, all I need to do really is point them into, in the direction of this, which was the last thing that I wrote with comedians before leaving um, in 87. And I just point them at this song, and the lyrics, I believe, personally, explain it all, uh, what was going on with it. So, um, if you're one of those people who were curious and wondered why that was, uh, here's your answer. So, it's called, Is It Any Wonder? <laughs> <laughs>
And I'm like, oh yeah, right, okay, well I've got a mortgage actually, so I'll have to think about it. But when he came to me, um, he was, uh, you know, it was, it was a different story. And he's like, come on, man, let's finish this. Let's finish this record. I really want to finish it. Some of the best work I've ever done on it. And I'm like, yeah, well, okay, all right, man. Quit my job, which was not a small thing, because I had a mortgage to pay. Um, finished the record, delivered it to Zombie Music very proudly. And uh, they took the copies that we made and gave it to them, and they incinerated them all. Oh. They, uh, they threw them in an incinerator, but not before one enterprising young guy at the warehouse managed to get some out because he, he knew what was coming and he got them out of there and he distributed them. So there are some, out, there are some CD copies out there. If you've got one, you've got some quite special because there aren't that many of them. It was never released. They burned them. So, um, yeah, uh, they're, they're happy. They're, there's, a, there's a couple of positives though. Like one, uh, Steve eventually got his label back again. That was not quite so long ago, actually. He's got it back now. He's, he's uh, got his website up, and um, you can find, if you're so inclined, you can actually find this record now for download on uh, the such Dead Dead Good Records, and it'll take you there, Mooch Around, Invincible, Venus, that's us. Um, and the other, the other positive thing was that working on the record reignited my passion and my love for what I do what I really do, what I'm, I believe I was put here to do. And I got back into that and I never looked back. So that was that was a very positive thing as well. Um, this is my favorite song from that record. And it's called, Think It's Going To Happen. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. 
Uh, we're going to take uh, about 10, 15, uh, 15 minute, 15 minute, 20 minute, what? 15 or 20 minute break. Yeah. And then we'll, uh, if you want to hear some more, come back and we'll hear some more.
in the Canadian Forest line and drag them back in the wake of the bounce ball. It's really, they're really nice uh, guitars and I've been playing this on the tour. I got it actually because this one was being uh, worked on and I, I needed one. So I got this from a, a guy who he, he got it to play and then he, he decided that he didn't, it wasn't for him. So he, I, I bought it from him, but it's, it's a really nice guitar. That's going to be auctioned at the end of the tour to see if we can raise a few quid for the Ukrainian refugees. Uh, you know. If it's something you want to bid on, then you go to the Comedians Arts Acoustic Events page that we created on, on Facebook, and uh, that's where I'll be auctioning it off. So, um, the song's called Happy New Life.
I was making light of, uh, of people asking me questions about Dan and about what the song's about, what that song's about, and how complicated that can be to answer. But actually, when I thought about it, it wasn't very complicated at all. I can actually do, say it in one word, give you one word that sums up what's behind all the things that I personally put into Chameleons and into the other projects that I work with, and that word is alienation. I felt alienated right from the very beginning of my life. You know, I was alienated from my parents. I was alienated from my school, and I was alienated from my friends. I was alienated from my culture. I felt alienated from that. In fact, I'm alienated from my culture now. I feel more than ever. Um, and alienated from myself and my own emotions. Um, and it used to freak me out as a kid, and, then, and I learned to deal with it. And then I learned to embrace it. When I got into music, I had somewhere to channel it. So that was, you know, it helped me a lot. And, um, and then I even began to like it in some ways, if I'm honest about it. Um, I wanted to try to uh, uh, articulate that kind of feeling that, of, of alienation that I've always felt uh, in something that I was working on with the guys. And, um, well, this is what we came up with. It's called Soul in Isolation. I can hear you breathing 
been a COVID wilderness of pain. And all our leaders are insane. All our leaders are insane. Sometimes you get so lonely Sometimes you get nowhere I've been all over this world I left every place Don't the lonely people Where do they all come from? All of the lonely people
for the collective consciousness to impose itself upon it and form it, it doesn't exist yet. So the only thing that you know for sure is real is this moment that you're in right now. And everything in, is actually happening in the same instant. It's only the illusion of being inhabiting two-dimensional gravitational field that seems to make those divisions yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And it's possible, and, and you will reach that level, you will reach a level where those divisions evaporate and, take in and don't have any meaning or context. Like, for example, they say that 15 minutes after your heart stops beating, blood starvation to the brain causes the brain to wither and die and you're gone. But where your consciousness is during that process, 15 minutes, it doesn't mean anything, it doesn't exist in that way. In fact, the, the, the space between one heartbeat and the next, the time space between that is stretched to infinity. That doesn't exist. You exist on this level where time is meaningless and all the concepts and all of the connotations with it are meaningless. When you're in that space, when you're in that process, and we're all going to be there, there's no avoiding it. It's something that you have to go through. We all have to go through. It's a natural part of our evolution. That's what it is. And when you're in that level, everything that you've ever experienced, everyone that you've ever loved, everything that you've ever loved, every conflict that you've ever had is happening there. You don't lose anyone. You don't lose anything. Endings, loss, they're an illusion. Um, I try to kind of convey those ideas into a song early on with the band, and um, well, if, you know, did I succeed? I don't know. You'd be the judge of that. It's called Second Skin. Oh.
giving us so much of yourselves and, um, and, and really making the night. Thank you um, again, Tim and Angela, for, for hosting this. Thank you so much.
Those walls are tumbling down Stop staring at the ground
Yeah. <laughs> 